that's fine if it doesn't work now. Um, and we'll, we'll do it. Okay. Okay. What is the world? I have this white elbow hair. Okay, now's not the time for <laughs> elbow hair <laughs> discoveries. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in recent events, we've had a game come out. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, most of the game community has heard of it for the most part, unless you're like not a PC player. Actually, I don't know if it's on other consoles or not. Regardless, Power World has been making an oh, yeah. enormous splash. An enormous splash. Uh, in fact, yeah. I'm pretty sure it sold. I, I think I just heard some news that it sold more copies on on Steam than the entire release of the Suicide Squad game. Wow. I mean, uh, th that doesn't surprise me, but I also am not I'm not qualified to talk about Suicide Squad because I don't know anything about it. I just know that that's more of like a triple A game. Right. And if an indie game is selling yeah. more like that, which is it's happened before. Uh, but yeah, I do know that Power World has that that whole drama surrounding it that like other indie games don't. Um, so right, yeah, like I don't think the argument has ever been made for another indie game where it's like, well, you know, if the AAA companies would step it up, maybe we'd buy their games more or play their games more. You know, specifically jabbing at pokemon but i feel like it's kind of jabbing at the rest of the triple a business as well where it's like yeah pokemon is not delivering but power world is and it's not even like nearly as high budget of a game so at least it, as far as i'm aware. right so anyways yeah oh yeah it's not even close it's not even close the budgets right um, and we've talked about briefly in the past the concept of like smaller titles with smaller budgets, blowing games or shows with bigger budgets out of the water. Godzilla minus one. Yes, you did mention uh, that as well. Recent mm -hmm. example of that. Yeah. Well, so, but on the subject of how world, the aforementioned controversy you're talking about, the whole concept that it's it's like a Pokemon clone but with guns, right? Yeah. Um, I haven't played and it personally. Some people I've talked to. Oh, I haven't either. I, I have seen clips. I've seen lots of clips of it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually staying away from like but, all of the gameplay and stuff because I'm saving my first experience with it for like a future occasion. So um, I like to go on blind. So it's like it's been kind of weird to not know anything about it other than like I know that it's like a dark spin on Pokemon uh, and you can do some really crazy stuff to your Pokemon and to trainers and um but that's all i know i i've i haven't even seen yeah a clip of gameplay i've only seen screenshots so so at its core it's you're right it's kind of a it's it's supposed to be a, a dark parody spin-off of mm -hmm. essentially a pokemon game yes um and a lot of people accused it of plagiarism or at least the 3d assets were really really close to what we would commonly know and identify as different Pokemon. Right. Um, pals. <laughs> this has come out to be pals. Yeah. It's come out to not necessarily be true that the, the assets were inspired by, but not specifically torn from the, the game of Pokemon, but it does bring up an interesting question. Um, that I wanted to talk about with you is the concept of what is inspiration and what is plagiarism and where is that line? Dude, that's it's hard. Um, that's such a hard question. Um, did you have anything else to add to that uh, before I give my thoughts? Well, I wanted to hear your your initial thoughts on it. Okay, um, it's hard because I feel like anything that you think of that's like a masterpiece has clear inspirations from other things that came before it. Um, you know, like so many things in, in the world are just re like, uh, uh, cause you know, uh, something on YouTube that's been going around since Ludwig joined the YouTube scene is the, the whole yoink and twist thing where, uh, cause he kind of just gave it a really catchy, he, he gave it a really catchy phrase. 
but this is kind of like this i think this lines up with this topic pretty well where um the reason why he calls it yoink and twist is for instance like mr beast released a video about like i gave this girl my credit card or something right and then he took that and made a video where he gave his twitch chat his credit card and let them buy whatever they want with it for a stream and it was a very similar thumbnail but like it was very clearly its own thing it was his version of it and he calls it like the yoink and twist right and he does that for a lot of things where it's like oh this guy is playing this game so then i'm gonna take that idea and make a youtube video where i play that game but with a twist where i'm gonna play the game but every time i die my i have to you know pay someone in chat a hundred dollars or something you know it's like uh he he adds his flair to it right so but it's very much like recycling an idea but that's it, it might sound like he's just stealing people's ideas but in reality, people have been doing that since the beginning of time. People, they'll take an idea that exists and they will put their spin on it and, and add, like add their own little flair to it and either make it better or just make it its own thing. And I don't know, it's always been happening. Like if you look at uh, freaking like, like, I don't know that th you can look at it all the way back through gaming too. It's like Dragon Quest was inspired by like something like Dwarf Fortress or an Atari game or something. And then Dragon Quest went on to inspire uh, freaking, you know, Earthbound. And then Earthbound went on to inspire Undertale, right? And it's like, you can see these clear connections. Um, but where the line is, I think, because my simple answer is like, you can kind of just tell. You can kind of just tell when it's, off, when it's crossed the line. That's my honest answer because it's kind of hard to put into words. Um, but it's like something like Stardew Valley is clearly, clearly Harvest Moon. But nobody's nobody's getting on it for being Harvest Moon. You know, um, whereas Power World is like. Yeah, it, Power World skirts that line, but I think that it can get away with it because number one, Pokemon Company is not delivering. They are not, they are not doing what the fans are wanting for the most part. Like they're not delivering a really well-made product, especially there is no excuse for the number one grossing media like thing in the world, right? Pokemon is like such a big thing and yet their games are like, like so buggy and not well-made and all that stuff. So anyways, uh, does that, yeah, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, I get a very... You've actually mentioned a lot of the thoughts that I've already... I've thought of myself. Right. Um, so we're on the same track. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of just went off there. That'd be awkward. Yeah. Dude, thank you for going off. <laughs> off the rails. <laughs> off the track. Our train's flying, man. Yeah. Um, well, we're not on the train right now. An excellent... We're on the bench. Oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> we flew off the the flew off the track, and now we're on a bench. Yeah, put I did. our put our bench on a track and okay. have it be its own like train. Oh, that what we, the heck, yeah. dude? That's crazy. We're Try zooming. Picture that in your brain for a few seconds. We're zooming. Yeah, dude. we're zooming bench. Uh, so <laughs> you you bring up some good points where <laughs> a lot of these inspirations inspiration can generally actually turn into a genre or a subgenre. in my mind it, it definitely can as an example uh metroidvania games mm -hmm. are almost always inspired by metroid or castlevania right or even, i guess right. castlevania itself might also have been kind of a yes. fantasy take on metroid but after yes. a while you get so many different not necessarily clones but as you said inspired works of of a similar kind of tale yeah. to tell it's like a new iteration it then becomes a genre yeah it's it's like someone like just takes it a, little, a step further than it was before you know or give it give it gives it a, a new coat of paint right so because again like you know it's like oh metroid's cool because it's sci-fi but then you put that into a you know, medieval fantasy setting, and now it's completely different. So, right, right, yeah. Well, 
in that vein, I I think that's definitely precedent to be on the inspiration side. Now, I've got to bring up an interesting topic and kind of sure, yes, it's I... not necessarily the same thing, but it's on it's in the same track. Um, so I want to bring this up, and then I have one more point after this that I want to talk about. So there's this one I'm talking about uh, reaction videos. Are those mm-hmm. plagiarism now? I don't necessarily mean reaction videos where you there are certain people, especially this is a pretty common thing in like the political spectrum. I'm not going to dive into the actual politics of it in the slightest. I'm just talking about the actual medium of someone watching either a speech or a debate and pausing the video and giving their own commentary on it, their own thoughts and trying to teach the audience what the right thing would have been to do there or what kind of insight they may have or data they might have that the debaters didn't at the time. Right. I think that is actually more of a an analyzation or analysis of of the speech. When I'm talking about reaction things, it's like someone sitting down and watching a piece of content that someone else made and maybe nodding once or twice and just saying, wasn't that cool chat? And then moving on. That's that's what I mean. Yes. That, so you know what I'm referring to, and I think personally that that dives a lot more into the realm of plagiarism. Yes. Than it yes, does and that, that's one of the reasons why I said you can kind of just tell because you really just you really can you really can you can really tell when people aren't putting effort in or when it's not any different. Because for instance, I know that there's a lot of or at least there was there was a lot of controversy on Twitch for people just watching anime on Twitch. And like, that's what they would do. And they'd get more viewers and people that were like putting in a lot of effort to like do something unique. Right. I do remember hearing about but, this, but there are people that I've seen on YouTube and clips I've seen on YouTube of like some of my favorite anime scenes with someone reacting to them. And I love watching people's reactions to certain scenes. Like, and I think that those, like if people are genuinely actually reacting like I think that it's not plagiarism, but it is a it is a very fine line because if I think the the main reason if you can tell is like if someone who has never seen this show, if they're able to watch it for their for the first time, uh, like with this reaction content and enjoy it just as much as if the person wasn't there, like that it's pretty much just the same thing at that point. But if there's someone there who is maybe doing an analysis, like you're saying, or their reactions are very, uh, they're adding to it or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Cause it, it is, it is weird, right? I couldn't imagine watching a show for the first time with a reaction guy. That's like freaking out the whole time. I feel like that would ruin it for me. Uh, but watching it after I've seen it and having him get hyped while I'm getting hype, I feel like that does add something to it that makes it, its own thing um but i i know what you're saying it's it's so weird because i feel like the people you're referring to aren't the people that are like actually you know bringing their personality to the table it's the people who are kind of they're literally just in the corner and they might as well not be there because i'm talking about the people that you cannot ignore you know like they are there you can like doesn't matter if you want to ignore them they will be giving their input Whereas, like, yeah, the people you it's, were talking about, is like, you, I, so I've seen a lot of the the similar stuff to what you're seeing, where I get I get uh, shorts, YouTube shorts about of people watching Attack on Titan for the first time, right? Yeah, and it's like I showed my girlfriend Attack on Titan, and it's her like freaking out at the same scenes that we freaked out at, right? Yes, but she's never seen it before, and I think in that way, it, it's almost like its own organic yes. community building, like your show this person is like see see what i mean but somehow that translates differently to me of like when ben shapiro or or you know steven crowder some other like political speech person gives gives a hot take or a a dialogue about something and then the video is the video that i've already seen on their specific page on steven crowder's page or ben shapiro's page 
but it's just there's a person at the bottom of it pointing up at the person and nodding and just like yeah yeah how is that like it's interesting that those are those two things are essentially the same thing a reactionary piece of content and yet one feels genuine and the other one feels like stealing the content yeah yeah no i yeah because tiktok is a whole another realm of like it's all about stealing right but it's in that way it's trying to further the content in the same way that i was saying before like i think the goal of tiktok and like doing duets or whatever they're called where you like you take the the clip and you like either add your own stuff to it or you know that stuff that you're saying where it's like there's the guy right next to the clip like um sometimes those are really funny or the the the, the kind of edits that they do or like you know a guy's playing a song and then the duet is like another guy playing another instrument until the song's like finally a complete thing or whatever it is right like there are some crazy creative people doing stuff on that platform but it is there is something to be said about like what if the guy who made the original is not going to be the one getting the views it's going to be the guy who made like the 10th iteration yes that's going to be getting the views See, so it's that's just, actually it's so interesting because there's monetization and there's fame to be had with this whereas i feel like the creativity is thriving whereas but the gray area comes in with like who owns the rights who should get the the brownie points and the money for doing this you know like that's where it gets muddy that is exactly i was going to propose almost like a trolley problem in this <laughs> vein of thought and what would, what would it be what would I mean, the trolley problem the be we're waiting for okay so picture this so it what you're talking about in as like a TikTok of someone playing an instrument and then a duet is someone else playing the harmony of that instrument or singing the harmony or something like that. I feel like that's an inspired work, not plagiarism, because you're doing something to creatively add to the experience. Someone just pointing and nodding at a dialogue to me, you might as well not even be there. What in, If anything, you're actually detracting from my ability to like focus on what is being said because I know, you got but, your, your face and you're pointing now. But yeah, it's, this is the trolley yeah. problem. Okay. So someone makes a, a creative video, right? And the, they, I don't know. It's one of those, like, let's go with the, the chiropractor thing. Okay. You know, where they, they show them like doing freaking jujitsu on someone's face or their neck or their back right and then they're like oh you know it's yeah. one of those it gets yeah. a lot of views right it gets a lot of views this person gets paid out you don't actually get monetized by tiktok but let's say youtube shorts um you, you get paid out a certain amount of money because a certain amount of people watch that let's say you get paid out two hundred thousand, which would be a lot you'd, you'd have to get a like decent millions of views on this one Short sure. to get that kind of money. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then here comes another person who watches it and does that duet thing, that that stitch thing, and they don't do anything except make cringy faces of when they when the the things pop, right? They that's it. That's all they do. Or they put their hand over their mouth and their eyes go wide and they they just kind of make faces silently at it. And somehow that gets more outreach and more views than the original video itself. And that person makes $400,000 instead of 200,000. Now, in this is kind of the trolley problem I'm presenting is why does the reactor person get more money than the person who actually created the content? The reactor, and this does happen. This is like an actual thing. Maybe not with that much money, but yes, it does happen. Like I, maybe it, there, maybe there's a case where that has happened, but we're, yeah, we're kind of throwing out random numbers. I'm yes. actually intrigued now that we're talking about this to get a finer idea. I feel like of, it would, it would be, it would probably be you. like a couple hundred to a couple thousand. It's probably the more realistic, uh, metric in terms of like how, like the, what you would normally see. I'm sure that the, some shorts out there getting insane amount of views, but, um, yeah, 200,000 for a single short. That's insane. Um, Again, it not saying it's impossible. Money some people make. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's impossible, but, but I'm like, especially when it comes to somebody like remaking the video and having it get more views. Typically, that's going to happen on smaller channels. Um, and yeah, I 
dude. So I, cause you can just, you can feel that it's kind of scummy. It's wrong. Right. Like, what was their intention yeah. of reposting that video? It was so that they could make some money too. It wasn't so that they could further the the concept or make something cool or it like there was no inspiration or creativity in there at all. Um, and I think that's the I think that's the real difference, right? Like if you can tell that somebody's inspired and uh, wants to truly like make something or like do something cool, like you can tell. And then you can also tell when someone's just trying to get views, make a cash grab video, you know, call it a day. Um, I think I, it's weird how how easy, at least, at least for this for me, to tell when people are doing that. And, th- and this goes back to Power World, where I don't get the sense that Power World is a cash grab like game because everybody I talk to about it says it's really good, really fun. Yeah, it's yeah. All, all the co- all of the concepts I hear about it, like the whole adult aspect to it that is dark that is a completely original thing that's completely original and all people are talking about is the the pals look way too much like real pokemon which apparently like the guy came out and was like oh they're using the same models from pokemon but just altering them and it turns out that guy was lying and that that's not actually not even true but the, the, the question that that's surrounding it is that like were they using AI to generate Pokemon? We don't know, but that is isn't really our place to to ask. Or maybe it is, but it's like who cares? Because we got a really cool product, and you know, like I don't know. I, don't, I really don't feel like it's hurting anybody. Like everyone, everyone's just having a good time with this game, and it isn't just Pokemon. It really isn't. So I don't know. Um, you can tell, right? And that that's. Well- that's kind of where I stand with it. You can tell. So the intent is kind of the defining feature. My the, the next question that I'm interested in exploring at a different time is where, how do you go about policing that and ensuring that, because in my mind, it would be really upsetting to me if someone made money off of pointing and staring at the video that I made, that I put in the work to make. And someone else yes. makes more money than I do. I feel that there's some sort of un, like you said, there's like a slimy, scummy thing to it. Um, but that does bring about the final. Uh, we can have that discussion later. And I also well, want to talk about AI I, later as well. I I actually have a, a but, final counterpoint to what you just said. Which, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So because I've always thought about this because there's the whole there's the music thing. Uh, uh, like like music has had copyright issues for a long, long time, right? Where it's like, especially like people making YouTube videos or streaming, like you can't play copyrighted music. So a lot of people will just play like random video game songs that aren't gonna get copyright struck that are popular. You know, like how how much in the past five years, how often have you heard the freaking We Shop channel or Coconut Mall or the freaking Me song or whatever, like in the background? of a video like it is it is in every streamer youtubers videos right like because it doesn't get copyright struck but yeah i totally wish i could play you know songs from 21 pilots or queen or whatever right like these really popular bands um and i feel like the reason why they uh do this is so that you have to go listen to their music well i mean back in the day i think it made more sense because like go like it, so, like in order for us to get money you need to buy our our records or buy our cds but now it's turned into like digital media which is really weird because any like on the official youtube channel for freaking like uh, bands you can listen to any other songs and they're all on spotify which is free you have access to all this music for free already so how come i can't listen to it on stream right like it, it's very interesting and then this ties into my second point of like i th- in, in my opinion, if I made a video, okay, and it got like 200 views because I don't really have a huge following, and then someone like, let's say Ludwig, I already brought Ludwig up, let's say he reacted to it, and his video of my video, his reaction of my video, because he has millions of followers, got 500,000 views. Is that really a loss for me? 
because in the grand scheme of things, that was the biggest, biggest marketing thing that could have ever happened to me because him doing that gives more eyes on my product than any other thing that could have happened, you know, or like there's no, there's very few things like that. So in my eyes, I feel like if you do like, I'm a believer in, it doesn't really matter where I, like people see your product as long as they see it, because if they truly care about your product, they will come to you first. So it, to me, it's like, it's, it's just a bigger, it, it's a way to market your product. I feel like, um, and a lot of people that are really anal about this and they shut people down for using their, any of their stuff and anything. It's like, Oh, I don't want you doing this. Like do with Nintendo, when Nintendo had their whole Nintendo fiasco let's play thing on YouTube where any let's player that was playing Nintendo games shut it down. That was the stupidest thing they could have done because that is free marketing for your game. <laughs> You're li like, literally these people are like, bro, I love this game and I'm playing it and it's great. Like Nintendo's awesome. And you're like going to shut those people down. And it's like, what are you doing? I don't know, dude. That, that's my point on it. Um, I think it's actually a very useful thing. And people are just so caught up on like, I should have had the money. I should have had the views, you know? And it's like, just get over it, you know? I guess so. Um, there's there's a something of a precedent. I, I definitely can see where you're coming from. And I think there's some nuance to this situation or these situations that um it's it's too hard to speak on all of it as right. an overarching general is this a good or bad thing his promotion you're right the the simple act that ludwig would see your stuff and uh, 500,000 people how many of those people would come over to your channel you know and would take a look at other stuff that you right have. it's not like a guarantee but, for sure but it's not a guarantee the thing that i'm kind of thinking about that's interesting in this vein of thought, because I definitely agree that it would be nice. It's nice to get promoted on anything. Yes. You want to be credited for that. And that's where I guess I start to have even further issue with some reaction yeah. channels is they give zero creditation whatsoever to the original person. Yeah. And so, so some do, some do, even, right? Like some are like, Hey, I'm watching this guy's video. But make sure to go give them a, a subscribe and a like and a follow and like they like shout them out really hard. Um, people, sure, yeah. I think and that's I think, I think that's how I it should be. That's how it people... should be. Agreed, agreed, very much agreed. See, we're on the same track. So <laughs> okay, because I, I agree um, that it's a fine line, yeah. but I do think that people are overreacting a lot when it comes to, you know, like maybe getting ratioed or whatever. It's like, um, at the, I think I, I am a true, I am one of those believers where I like, if you make a good product, people will come. Um, but I do know that marketing is very hard, a very hard thing to do if you don't have a following. And, you know, I, 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 again, it's like, I think it gets really muddy, especially if like, if you're already successful and people are doing that, then it can be a bit harder. And it, again, it's, you can really tell when people are just, just stealing it. Right. Like, you know, like if someone's just like, imagine if I streamed Guardians of the Galaxy and I was a, it was while I was asleep. It's like that I'm just letting people watch the movie for free. That's what I'm doing. You know, like, yeah, uh, it, you, you just say you have to feel it out for sure. Um, but yeah, it's such an interesting topic because, you know, YouTube streaming really changed the way people consume entertainment um so it's well it's okay so that crazy. what you just said right there that brings me to um my my last thought um on the sure. while we're waiting sure. for the yes. train is yeah the access the the way that people can access media is has changed a lot over the last two decades a, an incredible amount of accessibility has like unprecedented in any other generation of time have we been ever had the same uh liberties to access media that we have ever had in any other generation of time in history right um but it seems like a lot of the laws have not really caught up with that in some in some ways yeah 
and I'm I'm interested to think about how the world is going to, to approach some of these laws yeah. as media becomes continuously more accessible and the the gray areas of reaction stuff and all the other things that we've previously mentioned are are kind of gray areas when it comes to legal action and stuff like that because how do you yes. release this how it's, do you enforce it what is right what is wrong how do you well, understand yes. someone's it's, intent other than just asking them yeah because youtube's only been around since you know the early 2000s so we, we're only, we're coming up on 20 years and it's also been rapidly expanding and you know growing and changing so yeah we've i think we've come a long way with how like the laws and things that we've put in place but we have a long way to go like we're still kind of in the wild west people are still pioneering a lot of like what is allowed and what isn't allowed and so companies are kind of just having to make it up as they go along and a lot of people that maybe are you know not doing good or doing really like sleazy malpractice things they're getting exposed uh, over time and just like it's just a crazy world to live in honestly like things are just like constantly this drama and that drama and blah blah and it's all made into content it's like if anything happens let's make a video about it because we'll get views and it's it's just a crazy world like it's crazy that that's the mindset a lot of people have um so but i don't know yeah. i yeah well I, i'm excited to see what people do in the future and if react content ends up getting like becoming illegal or something i don't know <laughs> right but i don't i don't necessarily think it would i just think it might look different the way that it's yes. done well yeah. so this this goes along one of the laws that is kind of uh i'm just interested in how it works is copyright laws because i I understand why copyright laws are there that that you don't want someone ruining the image of your ip or or misusing it in some way but it's it's intriguing to me. So I'm going to use um, Superman and Batman as an example here, because uh, believe it or not, Superman. OK, wait, let me backtrack a bit. The, at least in America, copyright law um, makes it so that someone else cannot use your intellectual property for any kind of commercial use. Um, and this copyright claim or slash law, if you have a copyright on your own intellectual property, it lasts the lifespan of the person who owns it, like the author or creator of the intellectual property, plus 70 years. So 70 years after they pass away. Interesting. Basically. Okay. So that's that's the actual time. With that being said, Superman becomes free domain, so the copyright is lifted, in 2034 so in 10 years wow um and batman is only a year after that it's 2035 for batman wow and it's interesting to think that while these copyrights are still there and there's there's a lot of um you know superman and batman stories out there there's a lot of fan stuff out there and this is where a uh, another gray area comes in is fan art and of Superman and Batman are found all over the place at any convention you go to. You'll find yeah. something of Superman, something of Batman. And they're being sold uh, for money. Something of One Piece. Yeah. Yeah, that are being sold for commercial use. And it's it's intriguing to think about, well, how come that's not getting copyright banned? Or And from to my understanding, I've had a discourse of this of, of some other people and mostly what they said was uh it's just too hard to police that at this current juncture like it, it's just too hard for companies to seek out every little fan art person and and strike it yeah but i mean i'm also all kind of on the side where i feel like they shouldn't be taken down even if exactly we were able to that's the it. interesting conundrum no. it's like even even with this fan art stuff which is it's interesting to me that a lot of fan art looks better than than like official art, right? <laughs> Sometimes, uh -huh. yep. Uh, uh huh. I know what you mean, man. Uh, but in that vein, it's it's intriguing that like there are lots of stores on like Redbubble or Etsy and stuff that 
literally one for one will take the icons from Smash Bros and sell them as stickers. And it's like, yes, I feel like that's and that's along the line of like, I think that's not super OK. Um, like if I was if I was to make Smash stickers, I would like make them a little different. But I, I don't know, dude, it is it's on the line. That's why it's hard for me is it's on the line, because I'm like, they are going through the effort of exactly. buying sticker stuff. That's and why I actually making the stickers and blah, blah, blah. Um, I just I just like to see actual creativity and like transformation put into stuff like if i if i was to take an idea someone else did i would try really hard to make it very different um at, right, least, on, right. at least on a base level i don't i mean and that's just my nature too i don't i don't like doing uh the same thing someone else does like i i want to i want to do something new something that no one's ever done so it's like let's let's add these yeah, two ingredients together sure. that have never been added together before and make something new um which I think that should be the mindset, honestly. If you're wanting to go into the entertainment business yeah. and you're going to the creative world, that should be your mindset, you know? Like, why, why do something that's already been done, you know? But then we also live in a world where that would be, people need money. At least so, in my mind, the mindset of someone on the, you know, good alignment is, at least in my mind, someone that would want to add to the creative sphere. Sure, and ev everyone's motivated yeah. differently, but you yeah. know, you just hate to see it when people are making things, but they they don't they're not using any creativity at all. Like that, it just uh, I feel like that's it's it's just counterintuitive in my opinion. So, right. Well, for uh the the train's almost here, so um I guess the thing that I want to ponder after having this conversation, because it's been very interesting to hear your take on it, is just like, where do we go from here with all this? And I just kind of want to ponder that and almost come back to it. Another, another, on another break. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really, it's, it's a really interesting, really interesting thing. I, I honestly have no idea. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't even know how we got to where we are. <laughs> it's like it's like we woke up one day and Twitch existed. And it's like, oh, okay, this is a thing now. <laughs> yeah. And we just like, by the time we get used to Twitch, like the new thing's going to come around. And, you know, like TikTok didn't exist. And now it does. And now it's like, oh, how, what would we do without it? You know, like not, not, that, not, not that it's like essential, but like I can't imagine a world where it doesn't exist. And so it's like, it's just crazy. Right, yeah. But anyway, we got to catch our next train. Yeah, that's right. Ugh. Been good to sit but, here uh, on this bench. Be sure to like and subscribe, speaking outward into the heavens. Grace us with likes and subscribes. Yeah, and if you have any topics that you guys want us to talk about, put them in the comments. We'll talk it about them. It could be straight up anything. It could I, be anything. On the bench, anything uh, goes on the bench, bro. Anything goes. Anything goes on the bench of the in between. But yeah, uh, we'll we'll see you in the next episode.